Hello, this is Sean from Raising Awesome. We have started an ambitious project based on the new Matrix Creator Development Board. You can purchase this board at Element 14, as well as find a growing community around their application. This board is currently in its alpha stage, so the setup is pretty tricky. In this video, I'll take you through every step it takes to get the board up and running on your Wi-Fi. So the stuff you'll need to do this one is a Raspberry Pi 3 or 3 Plus, you can do it with the Raspberry Pi 2, but this tutorial is not based on that one. You'll need a matrix creator, such as those you would get at Element 14. You're going to need at least a 2 amp 5 volt wall wart for your Pi. Anything under that won't be able to power the Pi and the creator combo. You also need an SD card, 8 gig or greater, for the Pi. Now, software, I'll, I'll show most of these installs. The uh, You need Node.js for the PC. This is something that's kind of common already installed on Raspbian, but you need it on your PC because you'll also install something called the Matrix CLI. That is what you can use to uh, send commands to the Raspberry Pi and Matrix Creator combo. You need a, an unzip tool that can handle packages greater than 4 gig. 7-zip uh, is what I have. You need a program called Etcher. That's for burning images to the SD card. And I use something that's really optional called Advanced IP Scanner. This allows me to, to find the IP addresses of everything attached to my Wi-Fi router. First, you want to make sure that you hook up the Raspberry Pi to the Matrix Creator the right way, as shown in these pictures. The Matrix Creator should be centered over the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi should not be hanging over its edge. So part one here, we're going to prepare the Raspberry Pi. We're first going to download the Raspbian Sketch Lite image to your PC. We'll download Etcher to your PC if you don't already have something like it. We'll run it to burn the image to the SD card. We'll then boot up the Pi. We'll log in and we'll run the Raspi config. That way we can enable Wi-Fi and SSH. SSH will allow us to connect to the Pi from our PC. So we no longer have to have the Raspberry Pi connected to a monitor and keyboard and mouse. It just needs to be powered on your Wi-Fi, and then you can take control over it from your PC. So here we go. First go to creator.matrix.1. That is the official site. And then it has the three easy steps, which took me about eight hours. The first one is go get Raspbian Sketch Lite. Download the zip. And then go to the installation guide. From there, you can get 7-Zip if you don't have it, but then download Etcher if you don't already have an image burning software. Now extract that image zip and launch Etcher. Now Etcher, for some reason, it didn't want to open its window by itself. It actually just opened to the taskbar, so I had to go down there and click on it. So then you burn the uh, image. After that is complete, you can now boot up your Raspberry Pi with the SD card in it, connect to a monitor, uh, also a keyboard. When you come up to your Pi, this is a light version, so you won't go to a desktop. Instead, you'll log in as Pi and Raspberry. And once you get the prompt, do a sudo or sudo raspberry config. Here you'll set your Wi-Fi options. Put in your SSID for your Wi-Fi router. Assuming you got one, you could just plug in your Ethernet cord too. Put in your password. Okay, now we're going to do SSH by selecting option 5 in the interfacing options. SSH allows you to connect with a terminal screen from your PC to the Raspberry Pi. So it no longer has to be hooked up to a keyboard or a monitor or a mouse or anything. It just needs plugged in and it'll auto get on your Wi-Fi. 
So that ends part one. Part two, now it starts getting tricky. First on the PC, we need to install Node.js and then the Matrix CLI, which is created by the uh, Matrix folks for controlling the board remotely. Uh, we'll then connect to the Pi from our PC using a terminal program called Putty. If you don't have Putty, you need to just Google it and download it. It's another free, uh, free uh, software out there that uh, used to talk to the Pi. Then you do the curl command as found on the Matrix website. I'll show you that. And then you can install the rest of the packages that uh, are, are beneficial down the road as you learn more and more about this, uh, this microcontroller. And then after you do all that, you want to update your packages within Linux on the Raspberry Pi to make sure everything is the latest and greatest. I had to do this to get mine to work. All right, let's go back to the uh, website there. You can go to matrix.1 or creator.matrix.1 and scroll all the way to the bottom until you find documentation. From here, you see the matrix OS docs. Read more. And actually, we need to go to getting started. And then finally, the command line interface. So the prerequisite for the command line interface to be used on the PC is to install Node.js on the PC and then type in all these commands. So this is where you get Node.js. Okay, going back to that page that took us to uh, Node.js, it now shows us how we do the uh, installation. And you do that by doing that npm install-g matrix-cli. Now again, this is all on the PC. They do not prefer that you do this on the Raspberry Pi. They want to keep that as lean and mean as possible. So after that is all installed, you need to do a uh, you need to register a user. Now you could do this with the app that uh, you can download from the iOS store, or you can just do it with this command matrix register right on the PC from the command prompt. And then just give it your uh, email address. It needs to be a valid email address, which this is not. Next, we just did the matrix register, so what we do now is matrix log in. So that took care of the PC side of things. So now, again, we're ready to connect to the Pi from the PC. We're gonna do the curl command on the Pi, install all those packages, but to get those packages installed, you have to do a little something over on the PC, which is the reason we had to install Node.js on the PC. All right, now I need to know the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. So I use a tool called Advanced IP Scanner. I actually just found this to do this project. Thought it'd be interesting too, to be able to see all the IP addresses that are on my network, which there are a bunch since we have a, a lot of lights and different things that are Wi-Fi based. So I got the uh, IP address, now I'll run Putty. Download that one, it's free. Down, get Putty and type in the IP address and just simply click open. Defaults to port 22. And now you see on the left, I have the Pi over there. On the right, I have my PC command prompt. So the first thing I do is register a device to my PC or to my account, actually. And I'm doing that on the PC side. And so if I looked at it in the app, I would actually suddenly see it show up in the app that this uh, clock crane is registered to my account. Here's a very important part. You have to take all these super secret codes there and copy them and paste them into an environment variable on the Pi. So to do that, just copy it in the command prompt, log into your Pi, 
go to your home directory and do a sudo nano.envrc. And then you can just right click and it'll paste all that in there for you. And just to be sure, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to select all that. I'm going to do a control C there. But over here, I'm going to clear this out because it looked funny to me. There we go. Now I'm just going to right click and it'll paste it all in there for me. And then now we can do a control X. You hit yes or Y and then save it. And then you have to do this command, source. Dot .envrc. That makes sure those environment variables are active and ready. You need that every time you run this matrix operating system, which we hadn't done yet. But here I'm going to echo out those variables. Well, I did that wrong. Try this again. There we go. So that just is proving to me that I did this step correctly. All right, so now we can get over to the website and do that curl command to install the Raspberry Pi packages. So we go back to creator.matrix.1, and in their getting started, you have get Raspbian. Now we're on step two, download the Matrix OS. So we do that by clicking copy code, and then going back over to the Pi and right-clicking to paste it in there. And this will take forever. It will throw all kinds of errors. It'll, it'll make you think nothing's going to work. And I do feel it is a little bit buggy because I had to uh, do some troubleshooting afterwards to get this thing really to work. When it's done, it will auto-reboot. So you have to restart your putty session and then log back in. And there we see, when I hit DIR in the home directory, we see the matrix-os operating system. Now, if everything went perfectly, we would do our source.envrc. Remember, that was actually in the home directory, so I need to fix this. We do that, and then we uh, run the operating system. This node underscore env equals rc means to use the development environment called release candidate versus production. Remember, this thing's still in alpha, so they default it to be the release can candidate to work with the app and things. So there it goes. It is running. However, there is an error. You notice there over... Um, and I'll show you how that error is presenting itself. When I'm over on my PC listing devices... You will see, okay, there's my devices, and where it says okay, it says no, last online was 48 years ago. So obviously it is not connecting, and the reason that is is because the Malos core is unavailable. And you see that there in red, it came down through and it said Malos core unavailable. So basically that means it's not talking to that big circle of a, of a microcontroller. The Raspberry Pi is doing its thing. It's online. It's allowing you to communicate to it, but it is not able to communicate to the actual microcontroller device, the, the matrix creator. So I dug into it, had troubleshoot here, and um, because that, that Malos was not running, I found, okay, I can look to see the, uh, the state of that service. And I did so with this command here, boxed in red, and I saw that it was... Um, it failed, it wasn't active any longer. It tried to run, but it failed. And the reason it was failing was after it, it checked the various sensors, it got to, uh, it was actually going to the microphone, uh, checking that driver, and it got an error there called uh, stack smashing detected. So I went back to the, uh, to the website to reinstall Malos. Now I don't know if what I did here fixed it or if they actually somehow fixed it but because I went back and I, I reinstalled some things differently manually uh, I got things to work out so I went back to the website and I went to the matrix core click getting started then I put matrix core installed click that and then I did these commands here that you see in this screen and that basically reinstalled the uh, package and I did the update upgrade and reboot 
and uh, it got that package back installed. However, it actually didn't work yet again after I did that. So I went ahead and made sure the hardware worked. And I did that by installing the Matrix HAL part here and uh, just followed all that. Now this, you don't have to, to install this just to get this, this thing working. Uh, if you want to do standalone, non-internet driven commands and all that where you're making your own C++ uh, code and all that, you'll want this thing. Well, I, I followed this description just to prove I could get the hardware uh, working with their test examples, and I was able to do that. Well, so then I, I went to bed after not being able to get it to go, and the next morning on a whim, I decided to um, simply do an up, update again on all packages. So I did this command, which is an update and upgrade, rebooted, and it showed that there were four packages that were upgraded and they went to uh to these now i don't know if they, these had anything to do with it or not but it immediately went from that service throwing the error to working after these packages were upgraded so now let me show you how you can um get this thing working now first you you have to make sure you log in on the pc side you have to do your matrix login but then you have to tell what device you want to use matrix use clock crane and over on the left, you see that service is, is running right now. And then I do matrix install hello world. I also could have done this from my phone at this point. And you see how the two are talking together uh, across the, the Wi-Fi. Now again, you don't have to do Wi-Fi if you do that low level C++ coding, kind of similar how you would do an Arduino. But this here allows you to do some uh, high level control and install some, some apps uh, you know, allow you to control it with your phone, basically, or the PC. So there it is, starting the Hello World. And I'll show you what that looks like on the device now that they're finally talking. There we go. And right now it's running the Clock app. I just did a ping. You can do Matrix Ping to make sure you're talking to it, and that just makes all the LEDs brighten up. And then I will do the Matrix Hello World, which will... uh do some pretty neat things. So that is it. That is the startup guide to get you rocking and rolling with the Matrix Creator. Uh, in this, I installed everything for it so I could go start uh, programming with C++ at the lowest level, similar to how you would program in C with the Arduino. The Matrix Creator has just uh, all these crazy sensors to it. It's kind of like a a cell phone that's on on steroids with you know humidity and pressure sensors as well has the gyro accelerometer and all that so this is going to serve us uh, very well in our project i hope you take interest in it as well check out the community on element 14 you'll see my my more full write up there and uh, get to it